Jennifer and introduce yourself in, in the chat. Um, my name is Tracy Cray and I'm from QUT. I'm co-convener along with Zachary Kendall and Lauren Halkin smith of a very brand new Australian scholarly communications community of practice. Um, we're calling ourselves the Diamond Journal Publishing Subgroup and we are co-hosting a session with Open Access Australasia. We're extremely fortunate to be able to present the DOAJ webinar as one of our very first COP attendees this year. So as you may know, DOAJ, which is the Directory of Open Access Journals, is one of the largest independent indexes of diverse open access journals, now containing well over 20,000 titles. And it plays a vital role in our open access infrastructure. Last year, DOAJ celebrated 20 years as a community-driven and a community-curated index and remains committed to ensuring quality content freely available online and to everyone. Today we're very lucky to be hearing from DOAJ about the value of being indexed to improve your journal's visibility and some practical strategies to ensure inclusion in their index. And speaking from experience having gone through the DOAJ application process now with several journeys, it's no easy feat but it is an enormously rewarding and valuable process to go through. So let's get started. I'd like to now hand over to my COP convener, Zach Kendall, who will introduce our speakers today. Thanks very much, Tracy. Uh, yes, it's a great honor to be able to introduce our two uh, speakers from the DOAJ. Uh, first up, uh, Joanna Ball, who is Managing Director of DOAJ and is joining us bright and early from Denmark. Uh, as Managing Director, Joanna is responsible for ensuring DOAJ fulfills its mission by setting a strategic direction, uh, leading advocacy and engagement, and securing the organization's sustainability. Uh, before joining DOAJ in 2022, Joanna spent over 25 years in management and leadership roles uh, within research libraries in the UK and Denmark, and most recently as the head of Wellskilled well University Library. Uh, she has experience in strategy development, managing cultural change and developing open access services and programs. Uh, she's also a member of UKSG's uh, Insights Editorial Board and is chair of its Board of Trustees. Uh, I'd also like to welcome uh, Ikhwan Arif, who is Managing Editor and ambas Ambassador for Indonesia for DOAJ. Uh, Ikhwan is a faculty member in the Industrial Engineering Department of the University or Universitas Andalus in Indonesia. He used to manage the university's library information system, including establishing the online public access catalog, or OPAC, and the repository servers. He's keenly interested in data science, primarily industrial and manufacturing systems research. He's been assisting Indonesian journal managers and the, in their applications to DOAJ. Uh, he joined DOAJ in 2018 as an ambassador and then became a volunteer editor and joined the DOAJ team as managing editor just this year in 2024. Uh, so thank you so much both for joining us. Uh, and I'll hand over now to Joanna. Thank you, Tracy and Zachary, for that uh, really warm uh, welcome. Um, it's so great to to be here. Um, and I feel very privileged that we are here straight after your first Diamond Publishing um, subgroup meeting. Um, and, and also just to hear about the energy that there is around uh, Diamond Publishing um, in Australasia at the moment. So that's it's, it's really great to hear that, and Ikran and I are very pleased to be here today. Um, I'm going to be covering the um, perhaps some more strategic aspects of kind of the how and the the how and the why of, of Diamond for DOAJ, and then um, Ikran is going to get into the detail of um, the the preparing an, an application. So if you could go to the next uh, slide, uh, Ikran, please. And I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, Tracy gave a, a, a good introduction to DOAJ there. So I hope you're all familiar um, with our work. I won't be going into too much detail about who we are or, or what we do generally. But what we're going to talk about today is why, um, why, we, why you should apply to DOAJ, or why we think you should apply. Um, look at um, uh, 
DOAJ and why we support Diamond and what we're doing to support Diamond. And then ICWAN will take you through the application and review process, um, looking at some kind of key points in the application. And then um, it'll be over to you to, to ask us some questions if you have any about the application process. So um, what are the benefits of uh, applying to DOAJ? Well, there are, there are many. Um, as you will hear from, from ICWAN in terms of the application process, all of our, all the journals that apply go through a very rigorous evaluation against our criteria. And so if your journal is indexed, it means that it demonstrates uh, that it, it, your journal meets kind of a, a gold standard in, um, in open access. And that means quite a lot to libraries around the world. It means a lot to, to funders. It means a lot to other publishers and to the community as a whole. So essentially it's a, a quality stamp um, for your journal. And that will give it a higher profile um, and recognition. It means that it will be indexed by library catalogues across the world. And so it'll give it much more visibility. Um, and, and a survey that we did with, with our uh, community recently demonstrated that, that journals that, um, that do get indexed in DOAJ do feel that they have uh, an enhanced reputation um, and impact. As I mentioned, um, uh, about library catalogues, our, our metadata is not just taken by uh, library discovery systems, but it's also used by other systems all around uh, all around the world. So, for example, Open Alex, um, Unpaywall, the Lens. Um, so, if your metadata gets into DOAJ, then it can be spread out to other services uh, across the world and have a lot more visibility. And of course, more visibility means that you can attract more authors and readers, um, both locally and from around the world. Excellent, thanks, thanks, Ikwan. Um, so um, Tracy mentioned just how many journals we have in the index, um, and we are really pleased with this number, and, and also really pleased that it keeps um, it keeps growing. Um, we are also, the other thing I want to emphasize is how uh, diverse an index we are. Um, we contain um, journals that accept uh, submissions in 80 languages and um, from with publishers in 134 countries. And that's much more diverse um, than any of the commercial databases um, that, that are on offer at the moment. If you go to the next slide, please. Ikwan. And then the next slide shows the um, just how diverse in terms of geography uh, DOAJ is. You can see here um, that we have uh, high concentrations from across the, the world. And I will get, talk a little bit about more about uh, uh, Australia and uh, New Zealand in, in a little bit. So in terms of DOAJ and Diamond, why are we interested in supporting Diamond? Well, at DOAJ, we believe that um, Bibliodiversity is essential for a healthy scholarly ecosystem. And we want to see lots of publishers doing well, not only, not only the big five. Um, but we recognize that diamond journals, institutional journals often um, struggle. Um, they tend to be not so well resourced. They tend to um, perhaps not have the whole uh, remit of areas of expertise that publishing a journal takes. And that's where we can um, come in and provide some advice and support. But this is, these are some of the ways that we, we um, address, because there's the imbalance in the scholarly communications ecosystem and really try and highlight open access journals. One of them is through um, communications. So we, uh, we shout loudly about a, the number of journals in DOAJ, but also try and highlight some of the excellent work that specific journals are doing. Um, we are also very much part of that wave uh, of diamond, uh, which is happening at the moment. We were, uh, we've been, we were present at the global summit in Toluca. Um, and I know that, that you had a, a satellite event um, in Australasia as part of that. Um, we've endorsed the open access uh, plan for Diamond Open Access, and we're participating in the two um, Horizon Europe projects, um, DMAS and Craft, which are all focused about providing um, 
support and tools, uh, guidelines, standards for Diamond Open Access, which of course um, will be working with communities across the, the world to try and gain some consensus on what, that, what these standards um, uh, and tools should be. Um, and finally, we uh, encourage journal indexing, or we work very hard actually to try and get journals indexed in underrepresented regions of the world. Um, so we do this through our uh, ambassador program. Um, Ikwan is our ambassador for Indonesia, but we have ambassadors across the world um, and we're, we target particular areas to try and get more journals from that region into the index. And um, here's a familiar face. Um, then this is just to highlight some of the work we do around communications. Um, uh, we, we launched last year a uh, kind of journal story series where we, we highlight the work of individual uh, diamond journals in our community. And, and one of those was, uh, was Trace's journal. Um, this is a figure that we, we uh, talk about a lot in our communications. Um, there is a myth that um, op to be open access, you have to charge an APC. You don't. 67% um, of the journals in DOAJ don't have APCs. Um, and that uh, proportion actually hasn't really changed despite um, changes in funder policies, which have made um, APCs much more attractive. So we have, you know, we have a high number of, of diamond journals and diamond journals are, are thriving and, and, and flourishing. Um, so just focusing in um, on, on Australasia, and I can't take the credit for these figures. This is some, uh, some work that Ikwan has done to look at the Australasian journals in DOAJ. Now, I, I would love to hear from you, um, how comprehensive this list is, because of course, one of the issues with Diamond is we're not quite sure how many Diamond journals are out there at the moment, um, but it's quite overwhelming when you look at the total number of uh, Australasians in, Australasian journals in DOAJ, just how strong the, the no, no APC and um, authors holding copyright segment of, of that, uh, of that collection is so there's you know 72 journals um, that would would count with that slightly narrower definition of, of diamond in in the index and we hope um, that with the with the energy around diamond in Australasia that that number will um, will continue to increase. And now I'm going to pass over to Iquan who's going to take you through. Uh, the, the process of applying. Okay, hello. Thank you, Joanna. Um, uh, we'll continue with the uh, DOJ application and review process for the DOAJ. We have uh, 8,000 applications uh, in 2023, 24% uh, accepted. So basically our rejection rates is quite higher uh, for, for, for the journal. So it's not 100% uh, or 50% of the applications that index with the uh, get included in, in the AJ. So uh, it's quite a challenging uh, uh, application process for the journal. So uh, this is the that uh, also uh, being, uh, we're paying attention, especially like I did in Indonesia, we have, uh, the AJ got 24%, we have 20% of the, so it's lower in Indonesia. Uh, the application review and decision, we have uh, five stages of this uh, application uh, process in the AJ. The first process is uh, where the publisher or the editor uh, fill in the application and then the trust team, the DOAJ trust team, they will check for uh, the initial uh, checks. We uh, say like some uh, like ISSN uh, data uh, uh, compliance with the open access. And that's the basic check uh, for the journals to get indexed in DOAJ. 
And then uh, there is the review. There are reviews, uh, independent reviews by the editorial team. Uh, there are three uh, levels of uh, reviews here. Uh, first, by the assistant editor, and then the editor, and finally by the managing editor in this final decision of uh, review uh, of, of the journal. And then feedback from the DWJ, uh, sorry, from DWJ to the publisher of uh, the journal or editor of the journal. Uh, the assessment checks by the triage uh, will go to the journal data in issn.org. So all the journal data must uh, comply, must uh, accurate based on the issn.org data. Uh, the website is available. So uh, this early this morning, I just reject the journal because the website cannot be reached. Uh, it's off uh, for almost several days and no action from the um, uh, IT team of the journal. So we, we just reject because it takes our uh, time uh, for, to evaluate something that is not working. And then uh, the full text articles are freely available with a delay or without uh, re registration. Uh, the copyright and licensing is stated in the uh, open access statement of the journal page. So this is uh, being checked by the triage to qualify for the first uh, stage of the application. Um, this is uh, uh, conducted by the uh, uh, triage team. Well, actually, not 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 many of us in uh, the triage team. And then the final uh, uh, recommendation is whether to accept or reject the the applications. Okay, and uh, the final decision by managing editor. Uh, the managing will, will review applications and review the recommendations because the associate editors and editors also recommend the uh, uh, decision for, for the journals. Uh, managing editor can make further uh, adjustment or uh, contact the journal for uh, confirmation of their information. So we're not just uh, saying some, some small details then we just reject the journal. Now we don't we don't do that kind of thing. So if there are some small details uh, or that needs to clarify the clarifications, then uh, managing editors will contact the journal. So um, the email. This is something that always these are things that always uh, happen. Uh, journals uh, fill in their applications without active emails. So when we contact them in their, with their email, they do not respond. So unfortunately we have to reject that application. Um, after the decision, there is an automated email sent to a journal, uh, whether it is accepted or uh, it is rejected. And the journal will immediately uh, appear in the OAJ uh, list. So the, the system will uh, display the journal uh, just by the second uh, it is accepted uh, in the uh, in DYJ. For the journals uh, being rejected by DYJ, they, there is a six month uh, waiting time before they can reapply uh, to the DYJ. That is the normal cases. Some journals, uh, got one year exclusion, some got three years, depends on the severity of their um, uh, applications uh, in, in uh, com compliance with the DWAJ. Um, these are some common reasons for rejection of uh, DWAJ. Uh, not enough research content published. We need to have at least five articles in a year. 
to qualify uh, the journal as enough uh, content published. So five articles, not a big thing, I think. Um, some full art, uh, uh, some full text articles are available because, as uh, in the open access statement, we need to display. We need to uh, have the uh, full text available by the time the, the journal going uh, live. Um, uh, sorry, the issue going live. Uh, the links sometimes do, do not working in the application. Uh, uh, this is quite common because the journals sometimes the journals um, change their server, they they migrate their OJS version or their they they uh, upgrade the system, and these uh, links do not work anymore. Uh, the licensing uh, is not clear, and the peer review issue. Also, uh, going with the endogeny. Endogeny here, we have 25% of the endogeny uh, allowed for the journal to get indexed in TWAJ. Um, average application processing time is three months. So if, say, like uh, journals apply today, they can ask, uh, expect for uh, news from us uh, within three months. But in case of triage, there will be 24 or 48 hours where uh, uh, a decision uh, if the journal is not comply with the AJ. So between 24 or 20, uh, 48 hours, they will get notifications of rejection if their journal is not comply with uh, the AJ. Uh, this is our uh, statistics, a number of journal applications. Uh, as you can see, we have a steady rise of the application since 2008 and to, up to, to 2023. Um, but the and the rejected applications still high. Uh, the accepted applications quite lower rather than the ones that are being submitted uh, to the WJ. Um, my colleagues here in Indonesia, they sometimes said that it's difficult to index journal to the RJ rather than Scopus uh, or Web of Science. Uh, but it's because they do not quite get the, gra uh, the grip of what is the open access actually. So, so that's, that's the, the, the main reason of rejections that they face when they apply for the region got rejected. Um, key points in the DOAJ applications, um, all the journals, of course, must be fully open access, uh, must have peer reviewed research articles. They need to meet the DOAJ basic criteria we have this uh, guide to apply in our website. Uh, you can check for that. Sometimes uh, journal editors do not read that uh, guide. They, they just apply, they just fill in the form, tick there, tick that, uh, but they do not uh, adhere to the, what we need in our guide to applying. Um, the application for process we can uh, you not to you not have to finish the application by the time that you fill in the application you can save the application and continue later uh, when you uh, need to uh, uh, fill in the application. Uh, first stage of the application is the open access compliance. Uh, whether the journal adhere to the wages definition of open access. The answer must guess here. And there is the statement in the website of the journal that displays open access statement when the journal began publishing open access and what are the license or what is the license being used uh, for, for the journal uh, uh, as the open access journal. So 
were not just uh, right, right uh, this journal is open access, not, not, not just that one, because uh, the basic rule on open access is there are two uh, major, say, say we can say that rule of thumb of open access is free access and then uh, license. How the journal governed by the license, uh, sorry, the word in the journal I use uh, the license. Second, about the journal, uh, there is the journal title. Of course, the journal title must uh, be the same with the one in the ISSN. And then the homepage, sometimes journal put um, one URL with several journals inside. And in case like in my journal, we have one journal with one uh, subdomain, one in URL. So uh, that depends on the IT arrangement. Uh, I would suggest that the homepage will be one journal for uh, one subdomain. And the ISN, we have, we allow, the DOJ allows uh, journals uh, that only have printed ISSN. We do not, uh, uh, for uh, journal does, doesn't have to have online ISSN, but it is good to have one, the ISSN, uh, the online ISSN. Um, but if a journal doesn't have any online ISSN, they only have printed ISSN, then they can apply to the AIJ. And then there are six subject keywords, small uh, apps, uh, 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 explaining the journals, uh, it is better to get them from the focus and scopes of the journal. So six phrases uh, that explains what is the journal about. Uh, languages, any languages in the articles. Articles can have any languages on it, in it, and but for the website, there has to be one uh, complete uh, languages, or if the the the, the website is multi language, then uh, whenever we pick uh, other languages, then the website changes accordingly with the language. Um, last one is the publisher. Uh, the information about the publisher, whether it is a university, whether it is organization or other. Uh, uh, types of publisher, uh, we need to have, we need to check the website of the publisher for its, uh, uh, whether it is uh, correct whether it, or, or not. That one about the copyright and licensing. Uh, licenses should be permitted by the journalists. Any creative commons license or the equivalent of the Creative Commons. So uh, journals can create their own license as long as it is, uh, as it is uh, equivalent uh, with the Creative Commons license. Uh, whether the license embedded in the articles, in the PDF files of the articles, not only on the website, but also in the PDF files of the articles, you, we need to check we are going to check whether the uh, Creative Commons license put in the uh, articles or not. Um, and then we, we check whether authors retain their copyright to the published articles and whether they got their publishing rights with the restriction for the published articles. The answer is for these two questions are yes or no questions. Um, uh, the, the thing with uh, license and copyright, this is uh, the main things that uh, get the journals rejected in the OJ application. Uh, this is the basic rule. Uh, when the author is a copyright holder and the CC license terms apply to readers and the Publishers, so the a license do not 
applies to the others. So that's the first one. Uh, if the copyright is transferred to the publisher, then license will apply to author and the reader. So there, there are two uh, conditions here. The first one is the copyright with the authors uh, and the license applies to readers and the publisher or uh, uh, the editor of the journal as well. And, and the second one is the copyright transfer to the journal or the publisher and the license applies to authors and readers. Uh, the best practice that we suggest is uh, for authors to retain the copyright of the published articles. Um, the fourth page is the editorial policies. Uh, what are the types of peer review being used by the journals? Uh, whether it is uh, only peer review or whether uh, commonly people use single blind uh, or double blind and then uh, open review or post-publication reviews, we can pick from the application. Um, there is this plagiarism checking policy on the website, but uh, it will not uh, make the journal rejected if the plagiarism checking policy is not available on the journal. Um, aims and scope, journal must have aims and scope. And the editorial board, there is a list of editorial boards. Um, and then instruction for authors, a detailed instruction for authors um, in preparing their uh, manuscripts uh, for submission to the journal. Uh, and then average number of weeks from submission to publication. Uh, journal editors tend to forget the time here in weeks. Uh, they, they, they sometimes they put two, meaning that two months, well, whether we have weeks here, so two weeks from submission to publication is not, uh, is, uh, uh, it's not realistic. So please do uh, check the number in weeks, not in months. Um, in peer review, uh, at least there are two independent reviewers per manuscript, for articles. And there is this editorial review is only allowed for journals in arts and humanities only. Uh, you, you can check this in detail uh, in our website uh, on the limitation of uh, editorial review. Um, get edited content must also undergo the same process as the uh, standard peer review process. Try to minimize endogeny. We have uh, the limit is 25% uh, maximum for endogeny. So we can say like, uh, it, it is based on the article numbers. Uh, if we have something like 10 articles per issue, then maximum two articles can be co-authored by uh, either uh, editorial board or, or maybe reviewers being the co-author of the article. Only two, 20, uh, out of 10, because we don't have two and a half articles, don't we? So 25% of the published articles are allowed uh, as a maximum limit for endorsement. And then the business model, we have uh, things with money, things with financial in the business model questions, uh, whether the journal uh, applies APC, article processing charges for the uh, accepted uh, manuscript for publication, uh, how, how much the money uh, must get paid by the authors for publishing the article. So, uh, so sometimes uh, journals, like I think what Joanna said earlier, sometimes journals got uh, mixed up with the 
understanding that open access tool must be free with the LPC. Now, LPC is allowed whatever, whatever we the journal is uh, wanted to, to put the LPC. But any information, whether it is zero LPC, we, we need to see the information in on the website of the journals. Uh, how much for the submission, uh, how much for the maybe review articles, or, or in uh, total, you, you can put APC only, APC is maybe like in uh, 500 US dollars, whatever you think uh, need for the APC. Um, we also uh, request that uh, the journal writes whether they have a discount for uh, authors, co-authors from maybe underdeveloped country, uh, countries or, or students with uh, short financial support. They, they, they need to uh, publish their articles with our journals. So you need to write whether the journal waive certain amount of APC for, for uh, these authors. Uh, also state, please also state any other fees that will be incurred in uh, publication of the uh, journal, uh, sorry, the articles. Um, and these are optional uh, best practices in uh, stage six, uh, archiving long-term preservations, uh, basically with uh, locks or clocks or in case of with my university, uh, we have portico with, uh, uh, we, we work with portico to, attack, to, to save our journal articles for long-term preservation. Uh, there is this self-archiving policy uh, what kind of self-archiving policies that are allowed by the journal based on the three uh, types of uh, uh, stage of the articles. First one is on the uh, preprint, where uh, the journal allows uh, authors to self-archive uh, the preprints. Or uh, the second one is the postprint, uh, where uh, the authors, oh, sorry, the journal allows authors to uh, archive these post prints. Uh, and the, the last one is the published version. Uh, uh, the published version allowed for, to get uh, uh, saved by the authors in any repository servers uh, they, of their choice, uh, chosen, like uh, maybe uh, in the Figshare, uh, OSF, uh, you, uh, Zenodo, they, 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 any, any, any uh, repository services that is uh, allowed or picked by the authors. Um, in repository, university repositories are not allowed for the uh, self-archiving policy. So it's, it needs to be outside of the uh, publisher or, or, or with the uh, uh, repository uh, public repository servers. And then the unique identifiers, usually DOI, some journals use also uh, handles uh, uh, or URN, uh, but usually we are using DOI. Uh, and whether authors uh, or tip ID are uh, saved, uh, are available in their uh, data. Um, and then open references uh, that will get uh, the metadata of the references for uh, of the articles. Okay, so in applying to the WJ, please make sure to check the journal um, for guide to applying and the publisher information. There are PDFs of the application questions uh, on uh, the AJ's website. Uh, there is, I'm not sure we have, in Australia whether you are using OJS. In Indonesia, we have almost uh, exclusively we are using OJS except for some universities that 
uh, help uh, financial support to pay for all the system. Um, there is the how to guide uh, through the AJ from the library publishing co coalitions. Um, you can also send email to help desk at the AJ or OLG if uh, your questions is outside of these informations. Okay, uh, this is uh, the community projects to support OA journals. There is this uh, open access journal toolkit, it's the good one that you can go for resources on the uh, open access to, uh, toolkit. And this is the place, uh, public publisher learning and community exchange where you can discuss on the um, open access or on, on the publications. Uh, this is monitored by Crossrail, the AJ, Copay, and OASPA. Um, there is also Jasper, Project Jasper, uh, on journal presentations. And the Think Check Submit tool uh, for uh, the journals uh, or for authors uh, to submit the journals or uh, to the conference, where, whether they are going to submit their article for conferences. This is a good one. So uh, please check with the tool. Um, that's the last slide from me. I think I, I will return this to Zach, is it? Thank you so much. Hi, Kwan, that was fantastic, and Joanna. Um, I've got some time for a few questions that we've received. Fantastic. Um, well, while I've we look one, through... Yeah, Sorry. I've got one here from um, Murray Turner. I had a question too about peer review, but um, Murray's actually asked, how do you actually know when with, when you're checking the application? So if someone said, for example, the the their review process was blind peer reviewed or double peer reviewed. How, how can you find out that information? Um, is there a process that you would go through to, to check that? Um, Nikon, would you like to start from the, from the standard process and then maybe I could say a bit about our quality team, which people might be interested to hear about? Yes, yes. So, uh, Basically, we, we're not uh, checking for, say, like asking for user uh, credentials, a username and password, and going to the uh, back end of the system. So, no, no, we're, we're not asking for that kind of thing. So, we just look at the articles. Uh, we, we, if, 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 you're, if you have been in uh, general publication for a while, you can see that this uh, 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 journal is not doing their uh, peer review well, and regarding whether they are doing double uh, 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 peer review or uh, or not, and it, it, we only based on their answers. We only believe on what they write in their uh, website. So uh, based on how honest, how honest the the, the, the journal editors with their statement is, uh, but we can uh, see whether the journals, uh, the articles are go were going through the peer review process on. on. Great, thank you. And um, uh, something else which actually uh, quite an important part of our work is that if uh, a managing editor like Iquan is going through an application and sees something that he thinks looks a bit suspicious um, and Usually, if the peer review process isn't working, it means that there's usually, there's usually other flags um, within the application as well. So the whole application would then be referred to our quality team. And that is a team of uh, very experienced uh, specialists within DOAJ um, that conduct thorough examinations into uh, suspected cases of questionable publishing, predatory publishing. And they actually carried out 400 um, investigations last year. So it's a, they, it's a significant piece of our work. And they would check for, and I saw that um, uh, Toby came with a really good suggestion in the chat, 
you know, we would check a check that they, they're, they're saying the right things about indexing and abstracting. In terms of peer review, we would look really closely at um, at the editorial board. Is the edit, do they do those people really exist? Um, if we're suspicious, we might, uh, you know, we certainly check websites. We might go and have uh, an email members of the editorial board to check that they really do exist and they really do review uh, journals or they they really can vouch for the peer review processes in that journal. We ha will also ask for peer review reports, examples, if we if we believe that peer review isn't taking place. Um, and there are a number. I mean, there are a number of other things that 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 we do in terms of checking the address of the the publisher to make sure that they are really based in the country that they say they are. Um, looking at language on the website, looking for um, strange uh, impact factors that aren't aren't genuine. So it's a it's a very uh, you know a complex uh, piece of work that we do, but we do put a lot of, a lot of effort in to trying to make sure that only bona fide, trustworthy journals are allowed into the index. But thanks, that was a good Thank question. Thank you for that. Yeah, I've had a few students this year, like young, you know, you know, this first time publishing, and and they'll go to websites and they'll see that peer review information, and see the so called editorial team, and they fall for it, you know. So thank you for uh, explaining all that. I can also recommend Think Check Submit as a as a kind of tool for your students to 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 use. I mean, a DOAJ is is a, is a a sign of, of trust but of course not all not all journals have applied to DOAJ but so just because a journal isn't indexed with us doesn't mean it's it's not trustworthy necessarily. Thank you. Um, a related question if I may actually um, if a user does become aware of some kind of questions around the peer review processes or editorial team of a journal that is listed in DOAJ, how might someone flag that with DOAJ? Just send an S a message into help desk, and we will investigate. Just so we will we we investigate all the all the, you know, all the cases that come in. So th th generally, there are two ways that, that that we investigate: one through the application process, and the other is mainly um, users that get in touch and say, "This journal, there's something not quite right about this journal. Will you take mm. look, take a look at it?" Uh, Helen Chan had a question around um, Gen AI policies. So is there any consideration in that process where you go through all the application process or discussion currently around adding a review of Gen AI policies? I know um, a lot of journals now have include or starting to include policies around the use of AI um, in submissions. Is that something that DOAJ is considering as well? Um, we're certainly having a lot of discussions um, about it. Um, Ikran can maybe say a bit more about the discussions that the editorial team are having uh, about that issue. Um, it's not something, obviously, it's not something we ask for now. It's something we could um, we could ask for in future. We do have um, there is a limit in terms of how many things we can ask, both for the person doing the application, but also in terms of the capacity of the team to process all those applications. So actually, this is a really good opportunity for me to highlight that we have just opened a community survey um, around the metadata we collect. And it, and I put the link in the um, into the uh, into the chat there. Um, and we would love to hear from um, from all of you around how we are using our metadata, what 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 you think we should be collecting um also what you think we don't you know we shouldn't be collecting because that's the other the other side of the coin that we will you know we ideally we don't want to be collecting information that isn't useful but that's certainly something that could i i won't be surprised if 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 uh the responses come back asking us to to begin to look more closely at, at um, ai Um, another another question, perhaps. Uh, would you like to talk a bit about the DOAJ seal uh, and how someone might um, apply for, yeah, uh, getting the, the, the DOAJ seal applied to their journal? Uh, and if they're listed and the seal isn't applied, how they might follow up on that? Um, yes. Now, the process for um, adding the seal 
the actual the technical process. I'm not quite sure how that works, um, Ikwan. Do, do you get? Um, do you? Yes. Does, uh, it's just an update mm -hmm. request. Is that right? Perhaps you could say a bit about that. Yeah. So the journal must demonstrate whether they are qualified for the wages still. So they they're not applying for the wages still. They they the seal is given by the by the uh, managing editors or, or the evaluation uh, process of the journal. So uh, the journal must qualify for, yes, uh, the link that uh, Zach just sent. Uh, there are seven, uh, seven, seven criteria that must be uh, fulfilled by the journal editors, uh, sorry, by the journals uh, to qualify for uh, the seal. So, uh, all of those uh, must be checked. Uh, uh, the thing sometimes, sometimes the, the repository policy that is uh, registered maybe with a uh, Sherpa Romeo, uh, they don't ha don't have that one, so they're not qualified for the religious field. Uh, say like archiving, they they do not uh, register with uh, maybe portico logs, clocks or. Uh, the pre one is the PKP, PM services, or the archive.org uh, uh, archiving services. So basically, the journal must qualify for that seven uh, qualifications. Uh, the license, any licenses, um, uh, and the, I think the copyright is, uh, and license, uh, copyright is uh, suggested for the authors to hold the copyright. So yes, uh, seven uh, criteria that must be fulfilled by the journals to qualify for the wages field. So they would. So you would either get the seal as you apply, or you would send in once you once you're in DOAJ, you can uh, send in an update request, and then once you meet all those criteria, you would achieve the seal. Um, I I would just like to say a little bit about the extra about the seal because I think it's something we have mixed feelings about within DOAJ. It does show best practice in, in technical standards. It's much easier for a big commercial publisher with a cookie cutter website to achieve the seal. Um, and, and, and within DOAJ we don't like the fact that it seems to give a ranking to those journals to say that those are better quality um, when they're it just means they meet a different set of te technical standards. So this is something we're digging into in as part of the community survey. So please do um, answer that and let us know whether you find the seal use useful. Um, and something else we're, we're looking at is trying to highlight other aspects of the um, of, a, of a journal. So it could be that, it, that it, a journal has, a, for example, a diamond seal or a subscribe to open seal or something else that that tells you a characteristic about that journal. So essentially, we um, kind of perhaps water down the importance of the the DOAJ seal as it stands now. I don't think I'm speaking out of, of out of turn here. I think that's that's kind of generally how we feel within the organisation. But we know that people within we know our community. Some people within our community value the seal. So that's what we're trying to find out as part of the consultation as well. Thank you. That's really interesting. Thanks for sharing. I think um, there's a number of journals, uh, open access journals that are indexed currently in DRAJ that have the seal. And I know that they uh, lean towards it as sort of a, um, a mark of best practice. And I really like that idea of um, you know, going down a bit further and defining the open access journals in the, within the different models, so diamond, gold, green, whatever. Um, that would be a great addition. Uh, does anyone else have any general questions? Scott McIntyre's asked around future plan developments for DOAJ, and would that relate directly to uh, what Joanna's put in there, that link to the survey? So DOAJ are doing quite a bit of work to understand, um, you know, what they need in terms of metadata or, or don't need to sort of improve the service. Um, was that what you were at? talking about Scott can you or did you want to clarify your question or are you happy with that bit of a blue sky question in that um aspirations hopes goals kind of thing things we might look at on the horizon um yeah so <laughs> that kind of question um 
Yeah, well, one thing at, at DOAJ, we are never short of um, ambition. We just lack the resources to get there. I mean, what we what we, what we want is to be um, as comprehensive as possible, and we know we're a long way off that yet. If you look at the the um, the, the the PKP research that was done last year around the number of OGS journals that that are out in the ecosystem, not all of them would necessarily be eligible to apply for DOAJ, but I'm sure a lot of them would be. Um, and we know that there are areas of the world where we're just not um, we're not comprehensive. So that that's really for us is is the main goal to try and get as many good good quality um, and trustworthy journals into the index. Um, in turn, I mean, uh, as as Tracy said, the the survey is really important for us um, in letting us know what our community need because it is a very diverse community. We've you know we, we're used um, and relied upon by 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 journals, by by librarians, by researchers, by by funders, um, and everybody's got very specific things that they want out of out of DOAJ. So the it is a kind of a bit of a balancing act. Um, one of the questions actually in this survey is is around whether we should be indexing journals that aren't they're not quite hybrid, but they're not fully OA. So where all the research content in a journal is um, is open, but where, for example, editorial matter or reviews aren't, um, or book reviews aren't open. So should we consider indexing those? Because at the moment we don't, um, and that will be a, a change in policy for us. So we're interested to hear what the community thinks about that. Thank you so much. I, I, we do, I know we do have to wrap up, but I do see one more question in the chat that I don't think has been asked. Apologies if I miss this. Um, Helen asks if any consideration or discussion has been had around um, generative AI policies. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. We covered did. that. Oh, um, apologies. <laughs> that's all right, Zach. <laughs> well, we Good. might wrap up unless there's anything final because we're right on time. Um, I wanted to uh, quickly before we go, thank Janet Catterall from the Open Access Australasia for all of her assistance in putting the webinar together today. Um, and on behalf of myself and Zach um, as co-conveners of the Australian Diamond Journal Publishing Corp and Open Access Australasia, a uh, huge thanks to Ikwan and Joanna um, from DOAJ for giving up their time today to talk to us and also sharing their insights. Um, and thanks, you, thanks to all of you for your participation today. Thanks.